And Anna was very proud of her husband's work and she wanted to make sure that he had as much freedom as he needed to take care of his work and didn't have to be bogged down with things going on in the household. So she basically ran the house and just kind of stepped back and let him do his work as Frederick Douglass, the abolitionist and the civil rights leader. On their time in Rochester, they housed two women. I don't, I'm not, it's not clear if the women lived in the house with them at the same time, but they were two white European women who were colleagues of Frederick Douglass. Now, one of the women worked on the North Star with him um, and really, and these women really helped him to get his newspaper off the ground which was a, a large part of his legacy. He needed a lot of help. He needed help uh, financially and, um, and editing wise with his paper. So these women definitely were instrumental in uh, assisting him with that. One of the women, Atali Asim, um, was a German journalist and intellectual. And so she helped Douglas find publishers for his manuscripts and translated them into German for him. She promoted his work. And it seems as though she may have fallen in love with him. Um, and there were rumors that they had an affair. There, another woman by the name of Julia Griffiths was a British abolitionist um, who helped edit and publish and promote the North Star. She was a really big help in getting the publication off the ground. And there were also rumors surrounding his relationship with her. Both women were single during the time they stayed in the Douglas household. Now these women lived with the Douglases for about two years respectively. And around that same time, Douglas's star was really on the rise. Um, he was really coming into his own as the famous Frederick Douglass, the famous abolitionist. And he was lauded by academics and intellectuals all around the world. Their home in Rochester was bigger. Anna was able to hire someone to help her with the laundry. But she still was, um, she still did most of the things to take care of the home. And also a fun fact about Frederick Douglass and his wife Anna and their Rochester home is that it was part of the Underground Railroad. And many times, um, runaway slaves would stop at their house and Anna would cook a meal for them. Frederick Douglass made sure that there were rooms in their house that were readily available to house these runaway slaves on their way to Canada to freedom. Back then um, in the 1800s and around the time before the Civil War, a lot of um, whites would try to disparage the black man and say, oh, he's not um, faithful to his wife black men are lustful so they really tried to use these two women to kind of tear down Frederick Douglass and um, and it couldn't have, and I, I know it didn't feel good to Anna Marae and then also she really didn't love having these women in her house and um, the women didn't like her either neither had kind things to say about Anna in later writings and probably looked down on her because of her dark skin complexion and her role as a housewife, her lack of education. Anna didn't really travel with Frederick Douglass that much. She, she saw her place as being in the home, taking care of the home, taking care of the kids, making it a comfortable place for him to be. Um, she would go on short trips with him, but as far as like his really big travel, she was not a constant companion. And that's where you had um, these, the, the two white women um, who would more so accompany him to his um, speaking engagements and what have you. They did have five children. One of their children um, passed, Annie. 
passed away when she was 10 years old while Douglas was uh, away, while Frederick Douglas was away. Um, Anna had to endure that alone without her husband there to um, comfort her. And he was away with, um, in Europe with one of the white women. In 1872, the Douglas's Rochester home um, caught on fire and it was likely as a result of arson. No one was hurt, but many of their valuables were lost. Lots of copies of the North Star, a complete collection had been lost in the fire. At that time, Douglas decided to move his family to DC. I mean, he was getting a lot of job offers, offers there. He was back and forth to DC a lot. Um, and so he decided to move the family to DC. After they moved DC a few years later, he purchased the home Cedar Hill, which, um, which is the home where Anna eventually passed away in 1882. Time period. So, yeah, a lot of people did. Some people recommend it for marital longevity still today. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I have a contemporary friend. She and her significant other uh -huh. choose it for marital bliss or whatever. There you go. You set for space. Uh, and again, they last 44 years, so maybe there's something to this. Right. <laughs> this is Anna's bedroom.